All right, scratch that, <laughs> scratch that. All right, guys, so rapid fire Q&A. Welcome back. So here we go. If hypertrophy is the goal, supplementing with creatine pre or post workout. If anything is the goal, I like to take creatine with carbs, so with a higher carb meal, or with a higher protein feeding. Okay, so this is gonna be the best for overall absorption. And typically this is going to happen post-workout. So my recommendation is to take creatine post-workout with that post-workout shake or with that post-workout meal. Question number two, what is the most common mistake that probably everyone is making? Uh, that, was the, that was the question. So number one would be not giving enough care or attention to their exercise execution. Um, and number two would be giving too much care to their exercise execution. So when, when, I, when I'm talking about this, it, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of someone that doesn't give a single fuck about it and someone that gives so many fucks about it that they are crippled. And it's kind of this analysis by paralysis situation they never, um, even if they do create tension, they don't have enough load. Um, they can't create enough uh, significant tension uh, to actually elicit a stimulus, uh, a training stimulus. So from a standpoint of, of looking at it very objectively, you want to have enough of the execution in there, but not so much that it's like crippling. Okay, question number three. If you had only two exercises to train the glutes, which ones would you pick? So one, so looking at rounding out any muscle group, you wanna try and challenge it in the lengthened position and the short position, okay? So the lengthened position is when it's at its full muscle length. Um, so for the glutes, that is hip flexion and knee flexion, okay? Or hip flexion. And I, I say knee flexion because I, I the first exercise is the squat. Um, so in terms of my preference for the glutes would be the squat. Okay, so that's gonna, that's gonna do a great job at challenging the glutes in the lengthened position. Number two would be glute bridge because this is a movement that we can load quite significantly as you progress, but also you can challenge it, challenge that glute in the short position. So the squat and the glute bridge our lateral raises, this is a popular one. So our lateral raises, the only must do isolation exercise, what do I think about it? So this is something that was to popularized to me by, uh, I think it was Cliff Wilson and I think Jeff Nippard waited on it. Um, so when looking at the delts specifically, I would argue that the Y rays would outrank, and this is something if you follow anyone education or follow Coach Kassam and you'll, you'll see me do it, um, I would argue that the Y rays would outrank the lateral rays just for the, the sheer component of its contributions to, to overall shoulder health and training the trap three. And in terms of isolation work in general, it, it highly depends on the goals that you do have. There are a multitude of exercises that will positively contribute uh, to muscle growth and to enhancing from an aesthetic standpoint your muscle. So in saying that, I think overall, I think being the only exercise is, is seeing it from a little kind of, from a short-sighted view. Again, <laughs> there's things that you just shouldn't aren't worth digging deeper into. Again, it's a statement I think, again, I think Cliff Wilson said it first, but, and Cliff's someone I respect very highly. And so I think that Cliff was saying that he couldn't think of any other delt exercise or any other exercise that contributed or trained a muscle like the lateral raise does the delts. So I, I think that was his argument, which is a valid argument. Um, but I would argue that the Y raise is better because it can get the delt shorter and also train components of shoulder stability and also training that trap three, which is typically weak on people. So from a physique perspective, there are many 
exercises that you're going to have advantages um, to building and transforming your physique. So long-winded answer, no. I don't think it's the only must-do exercise. I think there's a multitude of them that you should do. All right, so why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? This is, and what's your why was the end of that question. So this is an excellent question. Um, and this is something that I've struggled with uh, over the last couple of years. Um, I think on the surface, it's easy just to kind of say something or say like, oh, um, this is my passion or um, something like that. Um, and I'm not discrediting that part of it. I, I just think it's something that deserves, that I deserve to look deeper within. And for me, I think it is about overall, I, I think it, the, the component of this that I, of coaching that I do love it, it is helping people. And I think that's, for me, has been a good vehicle. Um, so fitness has been my vehicle to, to help, to help coach other people to be better, um, whether that's a better physique or a better outlook on life or a better relationship with uh, food or a better relationship with the gym and their family. Um, and so helping people, I think, is at the root of that. Um, but from a, also what I do is good for my mental health in terms of I get to spend a lot of time with my wife, I get to travel freely. Um, so yeah, I think there's a deeper question within that question that I'm yet, I've yet to answer or, or really give time, enough time to think over it. So it's a good question. Um, but my why would just, I think the fundamental why of why I do this is to help people. And, and this is just my vehicle to do that. But from the standpoint of like, what's my true why? I, I need to think on it more, I think. Or if this, I need to think on if this is my passion, if that makes sense. It's a deep question. So we won't go too far into that rabbit hole. Um, thoughts on spreading the floor when squatting. I don't think this is a good cue. Okay, if your setup is good, there should be a need to, if your setup is good, there, there should not be a need to press out, only up. It, does that make sense? So if you're looking at a squat, the goal of a squat is to go down and up, right? So if we're squatting and at the bottom, we have an outward force, how much of an outward force do you need to create to go up? So think over that. So in terms of force, that should be applied directly through the floor downward. Uh, also, you're going to put a lot of unneeded and undue stress on those external rotators. And this goes for the same thing in deadlifts when people say spread the floor or um, turn out anything in terms of the external rotators. I just don't believe in those cues. Um, I, I think they sometimes can correct temporarily some things that are happening elsewhere in the body that you may want to be kind of dampening. So for example, the adductors in a squat, pulling your legs in or your knees in, temporarily a cue can make things look great on the outside, but is it really helping internally? Is it really helping you? And so in terms of the cue for the squat, and, and pressing your feet out, I, I just don't think that's fundamentally a good cue. I, I think from pure mechanic standpoint, the squat is an up and down movement. Therefore, force should be applied downward. That is my take on that. And that's all the questions that I have for this. So uh, thanks for watching. This was probably long enough to begin with. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I'm sure you left already. So see you guys next time.